morning, gentlemen. Good, Good morning. morning. You know? Well, I guess this really is an experience for both of us. <laughs> I um, I don't speak normally. I add my two cents in a group, but I don't speak. Uh, I'd like to open with a uh, prayer real quick. Mm -hmm. Father, we just uh, we just thank you for this time, and we just thank you for the the, the blessings with the with the food and with your word today, Lord. That both our, our physical and spiritual body will be fit. In your name, we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. Um, how many of you guys got better than a D in biology in, in high school? I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, for me, no, I didn't, um, which is pretty ironic because most of the time, I uh, my the things that I refer to are the things in, in nature. I like being outdoors, and I and um, I'm always amazed at, when I'm looking at nature, how God has created things and how they work and stuff. So most of my my references are always into uh, nature. So today. We're going to have a small, I guess, biology, botany lesson um, in, the, in this. Uh, I want to start off first with reading um, Matthew. Um, another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of the, all the seeds. But when it is grown, it is greater than the herbs, and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air and the nest, and the birds come and nest in its branches. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever seen a mustard tree. Here's a, um, a couple of pictures of the mustard seeds. If you guys want to, or the mustard tree, and then here's some of the of the mustard seed too. On if uh, you guys get if you see that the. the Depending on the variety of the, of the mustard tree, the seeds are, are extremely small. The ones that you normally see in most of the stores, they're actually one of the bigger seeds of the mustard seeds. There's even some smaller than the ones that we normally see in the Christian bookstores. The, um, the, um, the roots on any plant or tree, they, they normally they grow down and out, which is to help uh, first, it, it's to get the water and the food to it, and then the the um, they depending on how far they go down and out. If if you give a tree or a plant everything it needs, and it's always right there on the surface, the plant and tree only the roots only stay at the surface; they don't go down deep. Yes. Mm -hmm. But if you withhold it and don't um, give it the food and the, and the waters real often, the roots then start going down deeper and spreading out farther so they can find it. And I find that in, in, our, in our, our life, it's the same thing. If you give a kid everything they want when they want it, they wind up being spoiled and they aren't very deep. They're pretty shallow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and when, when the, if the Lord is to, to work with us in the same way and give us everything we wanted when, when we wanted it, all our roots are going to be right there at the surface, and we're not going to be very deep. So, just like within in nature, because the roots are shallow, when it starts raining and the storms come and there's a strong wind, all those shallow rooted trees they blow over real easy. But when when the storms come in our life, if if we continue to to keep the roots going down deep and, and the Lord working with us, and and our roots are going deeper and farther out, when our storms in our life come. They, we, we, we are able to stand with it. If you look at um, the, the roots on, on a mustard tree, they'll go in, anywhere to right around 12 feet deep, and then they'll spread out farther than the canopy or the drip line of the, where the branches are. Yeah. If you look at a, um, a redwood, I don't know if you guys have ever seen a redwood tree. Mm -hmm. um, they, um, they get to more than 200 plus feet. But the root system is only, the deepest root system is only 12 feet. Sometimes it's only 5 feet deep. Because all the water and the nutrients are right there at the very top of the surface. That's why they grow in wet, moist land. And that's what keeps them growing. So the, excuse me, the, um, the root system on the, on the, the mustard tree, it is 65% 
of the height of the tree. So the, the tree is, is 12 feet, the roots are, are right, or 20 feet, the roots are anywhere from about 12 to 14 feet, which is 65. Whereas in a, a redwood tree, it's 200 plus, but it's only 12 feet, that's only 7% of its height. So for the, the redwood tree to compensate for this, their roots will go out anywhere to 300 feet wide and then intermingles and um, um, twines and, and fuses together with the other redwood trees. That's why they grow in forests and not use it by themselves because the roots by themselves, that shallow won't hold the tree up. Right. Um, so the, 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 with the well-balanced roots is, is how the, the <coughs> The um, plant stays up. Now, do you guys know what? Does anybody know what root bound means? Sorry. Root bound. Yes. Root bound is for those that you don't know. This when a, a plant or a tree is growing, and it's usually in a container or in a an area where it's completely solid around it. The roots continue to grow in that small area, and then it winds up using all of the nutrients up, and it. Eventually, if it's not taken care of, it stunts to grow to the plant, uh, the plant, and then it also um, eventually will die if it's not taken care of. And, and I have found that sometimes in, in in my life that has happened where I've gotten root bound and I didn't realize it. There was a, a point in time in my life where I I grew up pretty much a, a Christian and going to church since I was ten. But there was a point in my time in my life where, because of circumstances in my life, I kind of I, I closed off and I didn't let people in and I didn't talk to people. I just kept to myself. When I, I worked at a, a place of business next to people like this all day long, and it was six months before I said hi to anybody, so I just kind of kept people out. So I wasn't. So I was just going to church and just doing these things and just going and I wasn't reaching out, I wasn't serving and my my world and my, my roots of what I was, was was just kind of bound up and I wasn't growing. Yeah. And there wasn't no depth, so at a point in time in my life I I got it to where the my my roots were starting to rot rotting away and I started losing um, I had really no no hope and despair, and I got into to cutting myself to to because I didn't know any better. Yeah. And the 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 Lord was showing me that that even though we think we're on the right track, sometimes because we, we stay in this confined pot that we're in, that our roots get bound up. And really, the only way to correct this is you got to uproot the plant and get rid of all the rotten roots and cut sometimes you got to even cut up to one third of the, the roots sometimes it's good roots but it has to be cut up and then you have to take and rake the roots and, and get them all loose and, and redone and I found that with me the Lord definitely uprooted me I grew up in the Salvation Army Church which is a very conservative church very traditional he uprooted me from where I was at and brought me down to the to the Temecula Valley and put me at the Roth Church, which was was a, a true um, uprooting because because of the traditional style I was used to, and that was what I was comfortable with. And I could go to church, and nobody talked to me. I didn't have to to serve or do anything. But when I got to the Roth Church, the first time I went there, my my wife asked me, "What do you think?" And I told her, "The church isn't for me." The music's way too loud. I'm not used to all of that. They're singing songs that are, for me, is just way out of my acceptability because I'm traditional. We sing hymns and that's what we do. You know, the pastor, Pastor Henny, he yells at you at the sermon. That's I'm not used to that. I told her it's, it's not for me. She was at the time we were just um, friends and dating, and but she was going there, so I decided, you know what? It, it, realistically. I need to look at where the Lord wants me, and, and He definitely uprooted me and said, now this is where we're going, this is where I'm going to plant you, and I'm going to plant you here. And for my, my roots to start growing even more was, the Lord said, okay, now you're here, but you, you've always been in this pot of you're not serving, you're not 
talking with people, <clears throat> he um, he told me you need to um, sign up for the ushers. <laughs> so <laughs> I said, okay. So I was I signed up for being an usher, and I waited, and two months went by, and they never called me. And I'm telling my wife, I did my part. I'm done. You know, <laughs> this is where I'm at. And um, unfortunately, but fortunately, that Sunday, <clears throat> the usher came to me and was telling me, you know, hey, I'm really sorry. I know you filled out that the information. Do you still want to do it? And I told him, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> so he did. Um, so the um, so my my roots. So I started serving, and the Lord said, well, I don't want you just being an usher. <laughs> I want you to be the usher at the front door. So now you have to meet everybody. Now you have to greet everybody. Now you have to learn how to start talking to people. Um, I, I just developed a habit because of stuff in my life at age 10, not to talk to people, not let them in. So the Lord started working with me. Here's a um, thing about working with me on really what my roots are and, and where I'm going. And he he showed me that, that staying within that root bound that I had grown, but I had stopped growing and I had stopped learning what he had for me. And the the other part of, of not just your, your roots, but when your roots start growing, then you start the start branching out and if you guys notice on those those trees of the redwoods the redwood tree grows up but in relation to the tree and the branches the branches are a lot shorter than what you would think they would be according to the tree and the mustard tree when it grows you can see that it it's got a pretty good canopy over it and what the lord um, was showing me is that when it, when i got replanted and I, I was more like the the redwood just going straight up and and not really branching out and he's, he's now showing me that with the the mustard tree that that you grow up and 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 you start branching out with the with the redwood its main main goal is to grow up as straight as possible as high as possible and to be to the the, the phrase for me is is that catches me is um, that they're, which I'm sure you all heard, so so heavenly that they're no earthly good. Mm -hmm. The the tree just grows and it just is real majestic and saying, "Look at me, I'm see how majestic I am." Where the the mustard tree, it grows up and it doesn't do any of that. It just produces the, the fruit. It produces um, leaves. It has so many different um, medicinal purposes for arthritis. They're now using it to create a biodiesel. It's used to help migraines. It's used as herbs. It keeps continually going and giving. Where the the redwood, its main main use really is for lumber. And the only way we get the lumber is after the tree dies. But why it's still there? It's not when when we continue to keep growing um, straight up and, and in height and not worrying about going out. The, the, the Lord tells us um, in Isaiah 2.17, The arrogance of man will be brought down low, human pride humbled. The Lord alone will be exalted in that day. And the, the, um, the, 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 when the, when the uh, redwood tree falls, it, it doesn't fall because it's dead. The redwood tree falls and then it dies. The reason it falls is because it can no longer, uh, the root system can no longer sustain it and hold it to keep it in place because it, it's too tall. The the um, the mustard tree, it, it just it doesn't worry about getting the glory. It let it gives all the glory to to God. If you look and stop and look at the mustard tree, what all it does, it, it even you can cut a mustard tree down for firewood, certain <coughs> varieties of them. And you cut it all the way down to the stump; it grows back again. Mm, yeah. You know, so mm. yeah. So the um, and when you think about all of this stuff that the mustard seed does, it just reflects back on how magnificent God really is in our life, and how He truly works. And and the mustard tree has all this stuff that it, it's giving, and and constantly giving, which 
just goes and shows that it's, it's given all the glory back to God. The mustard tree is it's nothing great to look at. Some of the mustard trees are pretty kind of scrawny looking type stuff. But if you look at all the uses that it has, it shows you how really magnificent and, and <coughs> God really is with, with life. The... Um, The, other th the only thing I would really want to um, <clears throat> just close with this is that my question is is whether you're a a um, well if if maybe the Lord is speaking with you and maybe you're root bound with with me <clears throat> it was just a matter of I was in this this life and this is what I was doing and <clears throat> until the Lord uprooted me. Like I said, I had grown, but I hadn't grown really at that much. And I've only been at the Rock Church five years. But in that time, I can honestly say that because the Lord uprooted me, got rid of a bunch of the rotten roots, replanted me, now I'm, I'm, I'm going out and I'm, I'm giving. And in these five years, I have grown spiritually more than I had in my first 45 years of life because I'm, I'm no longer like the, like the, a redwood tree just kind of staying to myself and just going straight up. Uh, the Lord has shown me that, that getting out and, and serving and reaching other people and, and getting to know people and ministering to them and in the, in the turn they are ministering to me that, that the so my 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 I guess my question is are you root bound are you looking to for a title and a position like the the redwood and continue to grow up and and get higher and higher and not worrying about whether you're giving back or are we like the mustard tree that is is constantly giving you know the the the, the mustard tree gives us plenty of shade, you know, to, to sit in restaurant and rest on. It gives the, the birds a place to, to uh, nest and rest. It, it gives us medicine for healing, where, the, the, again, the redwood is, is just strictly for, for lumber, and which, which is great. As Pastor Henning would say, you know, I'll give you this for, for free. Is little, you can build 40 to 45 houses out of one tree of, out of a redwood. You know, so it, it, it has its purpose, but its main purpose is just one thing. And that's pretty much what, what my life was. It was just one thing. I went, I didn't volunteer to help do anything. I didn't <clears throat> talk to people. I didn't, I just, I stayed there. And and, and I could see that when that was happening, my, my roots was definitely getting rotten. So is, is there an area in your life that the Lord may be saying. And with that, you know, when a, when a plant is root bound, it, it, its function is to grow. Every plant's function is to grow. And when it gets root bound, it can't grow and it knows it's supposed to be growing and it's not. The same was with me when, when I got root bound before, <coughs> is that I knew that I needed to grow more. I knew that there was more for me and I, I just didn't know how to do it and I couldn't do it. Until I was uprooted. So, is there there are just areas that that maybe you, you I'm doing great here and and but you feeling like the Lord has more for you and you know that He's got something and and you just don't know quite that maybe the Lord is just telling you that that you're root bound and I don't want you to just continue to be there. I need to uproot you and that for that for me was the hardest part. Yeah, is is getting uprooted because I had. I had um, developed this whole thing that I just depended on myself. Nobody else. I depended on myself. I take care of myself and my kids. We, he, I didn't need anybody's help. I didn't want anybody's help. Nobody's going to come in and, and hurt me anymore. So the Lord is saying, no, that's not what I wanted for you. That's not who you created. We're never created to be alone yeah, and be by ourselves. Right. He's, he's never, right. ever created that. And until I was willing to say, you know, then Lord, do whatever it is that you need to do. If you need to cut away some of the roots, if you need to break through, through who I thought I was, then and and kind of spread me out, disperse me, so I can have a, a healthy top. Because the the without the the roots, a healthy root root system, 
then your your top half is not going to grow because the the roots is what sustains the root is what continually feed mm -hmm. and water the top half mm -hmm. and I can honestly say that that now in my life my my spiritual life is on a whole nother level now that the Lord has uprooted me so um, <clears throat> just in closing guys just just think about you know is is the Lord am I really branching out and, and constantly giving or am I just kind of moving up the spiritual ladder and not worried about whether I'm, I'm branching out whether I'm, I'm helping am I I'm offering shelter am I offering um, healing